Welcome to worship folks on this first Sunday of Advent for our new observance this year of seven weeks. If you want more information on how that works and why we're doing seven weeks and all that kind of information, a lot of that will be explained in the weekly news, but especially in the Monday schools at either 12 or seven. Uh, but we are resurrecting a ancient practice of the incarnation cycle of Jesus, which sort of mirrors times between the Christmas cycle and the Easter cycle uh, more closely uh, than our four week Advent does. And hey, who doesn't love singing a few more Advent carols during the year? As we go throughout the liturgy, I invite you to, while remaining on mute for most of it, the way we usually do, uh, to join with me the words that are in bold. Sing along on the songs, sing along on the Psalms, knowing that we can't always hear each other, but God always hears us when, he, when we lift our voices together in prayer and praise. For those that have candles at home that you're uh, uh, going to light in your home, there will be an opportunity towards the end of the liturgy. We've crafted a specific ritual for you to bring the light into your home, but I'll explain more about that as we go. Um, but we will begin with a, a prelude here and then lighting our Advent candles here in the sanctuary. We begin calling our hearts and minds to worship with the prelude. The thunder and lightning gave voice to the night. The little lame child cried alone in her fright. Hush, little baby, a story I'll tell of a love that has vanquished the powers of hell. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your The blind have new eyes, the standards of death taken down by surprise. Hallelujah, the great storm is over, lift up your Praise 
and we begin by lighting our candles here in the sanctuary singing together monastic style so you're going to have to deal with singing with me oh come oh come Emmanuel, and ransom captive israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Let us pray. Creator of the stars of night, who formed night and day, sun and moon with a word. May we ever keep our lamps trimmed and burning for your coming. May our beloved, upon whom we wait, see our watch fires burning and come quickly to meet us. As we have lighted now the advent lights, may our hopeful anticipation not be in vain. Come with haste, O Lord, and make speed to save us, for we look to you, the light by which we see in our darkness. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opened the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. We join in our gathering hymn, hymn number 264, Prepare the Royal Highway.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your waiting people, O God, and illumine our way in life by the word of your coming bridegroom. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through that same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Amos. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings, offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come, word of God. Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me. Turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say for us. But as for me, I am my helper and my deliverer, O Lord, do not tarry. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's archangels call and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them
Sarah, you seem to have muted yourself. We got to the dead in Christ rising first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come, word of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Keep awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in hymn 253. He came down, verse 1. So perhaps by now you have picked up the themes in our readings that warrant this year in particular, us starting Advent a little early. If nothing else, this gospel text is one that certainly for us Lutherans, we who claim the king of chorales as one of ours, kind of want to sing wake awake during Advent but it never actually shows up there. It shows up in this weird November time that has sort of come to be end times, the time between All Saints Day, when we remember all who have gone to their rest in Christ and Christ the King, when we remember the sovereignty of Jesus, we get a couple of weeks, two, sometimes three weeks, where all of our texts look to the coming of the savior, look to the coming of the bridegroom in this case, look to the return of the one who has come to save us. But they're not always cheery texts, but they are nonetheless hope-filled texts. From Amos this morning, we got sort of a, a 
downer of a beginning to our Advent readings, right? Why are you looking for the coming of the Lord? Because it's going to be doom and gloom and darkness and bitterness. And it'll be like you put your hand on the wall to take a rest and we're bitten by a snake. It doesn't seem like something we want. But there's this beautiful reminder that all of this harsh language that seems to be from the mouth of God and is definitely from the mouth of Amos is this call to remember that justice in the world is what God calls us to. It's not about how we worship. It's not about what we're waiting for. It's not about someday, right? Don't look to the coming of the savior, but let justice roll down like streams now. Let righteousness flow like an ever-flowing stream now. And until those things are happening, none of the rest is coming. Because that's what God's intention is for us. And then we have this text from 1 Thessalonians. And it's one of my favorites. It really is. You've probably heard me say before that one of the difficulties with reading the letters of Paul, and one of the reasons why I'm not always a big fan of Paul, is that it's sometimes hard to tell what Paul's actually talking about. Because we don't have the letters that were written to Paul asking for advice. We only have his responses. And sometimes he gets off on one of his tangents and his famous run-on sentences, and we kind of can't always piece together what the original problem was. But with 1 Thessalonians, we know precisely what the problem was. The problem was that the Thessalonians had bought in really early with Paul. Paul had visited and founded a church and it was growing and they were truly devout in their expectation of the coming of Jesus. The problem is around the time of Paul, we kind of thought that coming of Jesus was gonna be kind of soon. It was gonna be tomorrow, if not maybe next week, but Jesus was coming back. And then the longer it took, people in this community in Thessalonica started dying. And everybody sort of had a panic moment about what would happen to those people that died before Jesus came back because they wouldn't be alive to see Jesus. And Paul says, no, don't worry about these things because all those who are held in the Lord, all those beloved of God will be part of this uh, glory of the return. Now, I'm not always a fan of Paul's idea that we will go up into the skies to meet Jesus because I'm much more a fan of the Jesus that comes and meets me. I don't know, maybe I'm lazy. But it's still this idea that all those who in this waiting time, this time in which we wait for this return of Jesus, all those who are you know, in this community, all those who believe whether their faith is known publicly or simply to God, all of them are held in Jesus and all of them will know this life abundant of Jesus. Because ultimately what Amos is talking about and what Paul is talking about, and I would argue what Jesus is talking about in his parable is that in this meantime, there's other things to worry about. In this waiting moment, there are other things to worry about. And that it is not our call to every day be deciding whether or not today is the day. It's not up to us to declare who and who is not the forerunners of the bridegroom. I know there's lots of feelings today, but I can promise you that no politician is the forerunner of Jesus. None of them are this expected bridegroom. We still today, decision or not, are in this waiting for the one who came and yet who is still coming. That's what we hold on to today. And what we hold on to today is that we are in this together with work still to be done. I think we often like to speed ourselves to be the five wise bridesmaids. We have the oil. Our faith will keep us going. The community is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We have that oil. And we skip over a very short sentence in there 
And what I don't know that we always figure out, but as the bridegroom was delayed and 2000 years on, I think we can say Jesus is perhaps a little delayed, needs to work on his watch. But this, in this delay, all became drowsy and slept. So it's not that the wise bridesmaids brought along their mugs of coffee to keep themselves going. And so they were awake. No, they simply were prepared in that moment. But I would argue that this idea that there's only so much oil to go around, I don't really know what to do with that because that's simply not true, right? When we try to piece out this parable, there is always something to go around. There's always something to share. And arguably, whether or not five bridesmaids or all 10 bridesmaids had lit lamps, it wasn't going to stop the bridegroom from coming. And they were only outside for a short period of time. So I've never quite understood why there were these weeping and gnashing of teeth for the bridesmaids who simply were in a bit more of the shadows. But ultimately, what we are left with, the actual teaching of this parable is pretty clear from Jesus. Keep awake, therefore, wise or foolish, expectant or not, faithful or not, hopeful or not. Keep awake, therefore, because you don't know. You don't know the day or the hour. And what we find ourselves in now, particularly as we start this, this prolonged observation of Advent, is this expectancy, this waiting, this opportunity for some extra cries of come Lord Jesus, which our world desperately needs right now, some extra opportunities for the waiting. But what I would say is, it's not a passive waiting. We're not sitting here looking at our watches or strumming our fingers. We're not sort of complaining to one another about how long it's taking, but be about some business, right? If you're gonna be awake, do something. If you're gonna be awake, act in the world. If you're going to be awake, you might as well be of some good participating in the work of God in the world. Work that is that justice that Amos calls for. And so in this waiting time, we may think of ourselves as the, bride, or as the, as the bridesmaids waiting our bridegroom. That's probably pretty fair. We're the ones who are here waiting. But to sit here and point out who does and doesn't have the oil isn't beneficial. To sit here and consider who is or is not awake in the right ways, not beneficial. Rather continue the work that the body of Christ in the world has been about since Christ's own body's feet left the ground the work of justice and peace in the world, the work of equity and love in the world, living into the harmony of the creator who calls all things good, good, and very good. So in this time, let us wait. Let us look with expectancy to the coming bridegroom. Let us cry out for the Lord to hasten the day. But let us not do it passively, but rather still be about the business of being the body of Christ in the world. That the light might shine a little brighter and be shared a little wider. That justice might flow now in our own day. And that all those, whether they live or have died in the Lord, can still be held in this hopeful expectation. So today, let us be awake. Let us celebrate that the one who came is still yet coming and promises to greet us on the way. And so this day, this week, this season, with the church universal of all times and places, with all of creation, we cry, come Lord Jesus, amen. We join in our hymn of the day, Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying, hymn number 436. <laughs> Thank you. 
As we look to the coming of Christ, let us confess the faith of the church. You may unmute yourselves. I didn't note that in the new slideshow, but I invite you to unmute yourselves as together we confess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, one God, 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 God the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and earth all that is, the all that is, is not seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus, one Lord Jesus Christ, 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 Christ,
bring our mistis to areas of conflict and keep safe the military who serve in harm's way. Give to all the armed forces a dedication to defend the common good. Heal the wounds, both physical and emotional, experienced by active and retired service members. With those who have served our country, we pray, come Lord Jesus. Holy healer, bring health and wholeness to those who are sick, those who live with chronic pain, and the thousands who daily contract COVID-19. Console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Protect those living in resettlement camps. Uphold medical care workers, especially in third world countries. We pray especially for those names and needs we name here before you. With the sick and suffering and those who minister among them, we pray, come Lord Jesus. Holy beloved, form us into a people close to your heart and receive now our silent petitions. From our hearts, we pray, come Lord Jesus. Holy and immortal one, we remember before you all who have died in the faith, especially the military and the civilians who died in armed conflicts and those we hold dear. At the end, bring us with them to be with our Lord forever. With your saints, we pray, Come, Lord Jesus. Receive these prayers for the same of him who lived, died, and rose for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, you embrace and love those who cry out to you. Lift up all whom hatred has cast down. Embolden those who need courage to speak and act against oppression. Sustain those who are weary from efforts that bring no end to injustice. Comfort parents weeping for children, children who have been separated from parents and families in crises of any kind. Restore hope where it has been lost so that all may trust your love that reaches to the depths of pain and suffering. In your great mercy, we cry out to you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, amen. And look at that, it's a new slideshow and I completely forgot to say, the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share signs of your peace with one another. Peace be with you, peace be with you. Is that the advent wreath? Peace be with you. I, as I we continue, it. as we continue, uh, our worship, we give thanks for the work of God still to be done and the work that is being done here at Christ Ascension. I invite you to financially support our ministry here. You may do so either electronically on our website or by sending a physical check here to the church office. As we continue giving thanks, we sing our hymn of thanksgiving 254, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Let us give thanks. We praise you, O God, for your creating word. You set the foundations of the world and gave breath to every living thing. There is no rock like you. Blessed be God forevermore. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. We praise you, O God, for your liberating word. In your steadfast love, you led the people whom you redeemed and guided them by your strength to the land of promise. You have lifted up the lowly. Blessed be God forevermore. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. We praise you, O God, for your life-giving word. Your word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. You have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servants. Blessed be God forevermore. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. Blessed be God from this time on and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting. With Miriam, Hannah, and Mary, we give you thanks and praise for your creating, liberating, and life-giving word. Send us forth in the power of your spirit to sing of your greatness and serve all people, following Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. My siblings, I invite you to unmute yourselves. Lord, remember us in your sovereignty and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, Father in heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, 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 your will be done, will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We forgive, we forgive those who sow us in Save us from the time of the fire. Deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom of the power, and the glory of yours. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. So a few announcements for you this morning, and you'll know why I moved in a second. The first is welcome to the time change for our hybrid worship. We will be on this schedule with 9.30 on Zoom and communion at 11.15 for as long as hybrid worship is our model. So welcome to 9.30. Here's where we will be staying for a while. I invite you as always, if you'd like to join me here at church at 11.15 this morning for in-person worship. It's a gorgeous day and we will be outside, but I do invite you to remember to wear your masks. If you are not able or uncomfortable joining us here in person and would like communion brought to you in your home, please just let me know. I am more than happy to do that. We can stay on your front porch if you'd like, uh, but that offer is always there for you. We took a brief hiatus last week of Monday school, but uh, Monday school starts up again tomorrow as we explore the readings and the celebration of seven weeks of Advent. We will share together some, um, some of the readings that, that we from this Sunday, we'll, we'll talk about more on Monday um, at 12 and seven, but also just some of the, why are we doing this for seven weeks? Um, and so I invite you to join me there, that link, will be sent out separately from the weekly news as it has been for Monday School. But that same link from Monday School will be good from the first week to the last week that we gather. Savior of the Nations Come is the theme of our Advent evening prayer this year. We will gather at 7 p.m. on Zoom. A link will be sent on Wednesdays. This service of evening prayer helps us in our waiting. And it's a chance for us to gather with devotion and prayer and one another in this season of anticipation. That link will be there at 7 p.m. Uh, what will be there for, for evening prayer at 7 p.m. Because of that and because of what we're doing from Monday School, there will be no Bible study on Wednesdays for the remainder of 2020. Oops, somebody's, somebody's unmuted and I'm getting some feedback here. Uh, okay. Um, so I, can, I thank you for the ways you continue to support our ministry here at Christ Ascension. And I invite you to remember, particularly in this season, the ongoing needs of our partners in ministry. I know I've been talking to Welcome Church and some others. Um, nobody expected this to go on as long as it did. And so needs are still there, if not rising. More information about that is in the weekly news. That weekly news is sent out on Mondays. And I do invite you to check it. I try to spice it up as much as I can, but there will, um, but you know, read the words and not just look at the pictures because the pictures don't always change. There will be in that weekly news that's sent out tomorrow, 
every week of, of Advent, there will be a devotion that I have crafted for some time in the home, a great opportunity for you to light your Advent candles during the week. And I, oh, just a second. And I uh, invite you to use that. That will be available with a link in the weekly news. Finally, you should have received uh, the announcement in last week's weekly news. You'll receive another one tomorrow, giving us the full righteousness of two weeks of announcements. There will be a congregational meeting next Sunday, immediately following worship here on Zoom. We will dismiss and then we will stay so that we can have what should be a relatively brief meeting. More information will come tomorrow in the weekly news, uh, but this is, uh, a needed congregational meeting for congregational approval of a recommendation from council regarding some development in the play yard and the garage and storage and uh, stormwater runoff mitigation and lots of other stuff. Um, but council sends that to you with recommendation. There will be more information tomorrow. And as I say, I don't anticipate that being a long meeting, but it will happen here on Zoom immediately following worship. Finally, as always, if you have any announcements that you would like the wider congregation to know about, please feel free to email me by Sunday afternoon so that I'm sure they can be included in the Monday weekly news. And now we sing uh, verse one of hymn 247, Come Now, O Prince of Peace. I invite you now to uh, light your own candles if you are doing that in your home. Now is the time to light the first of your seven candles. What we will do each week is that we will begin worship with the previous week's lights lit, and then we will light the sanctuary lights that we will share together, and then this opportunity for you to bring the light into your home to then use during the week. So I send you and invite you to receive this light. Beloved of God, receive the light that we share in this season of anticipation. As we light our lights and keep our watch fires burning, may Christ, the bright evening star, see them burning and come quickly to meet us. In your prayer, devotion, and waiting this week, light your lights to the glory of God and in hopeful expectation for the coming of Christ. And now may the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God's sovereign savior and spirit be with you today and always, amen. And now we join in our sending hymn, hymn number 244, Rejoice, Rejoice Believers.
Wherever we are, Christ's ascension is gathered by God in faith, proclaiming Christ's hope sent by the Spirit to love. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is today a special treat of a postlude. Didn't mean for that to happen. There we go. Thank you. 